Hello beautiful people around the web, I'm SingersHD and today I continue this series of tutorials for Man vs Machine Team Fortress 2 cooperative game mode and today's topic will be the soldier. It is a basic guide, some advanced stuff included, but this should lay the basics of how to play soldier, what to upgrade and some special tips that I may have on hand for you. So let's start right off. I want to go over the weapons first. The upgrades seem to not make sense sometimes if I include them when I basically have a weapon in mind that I upgrade, so I just go for the weapon's choice first. The weapon I often use and basically always use because it deals the most damage is the Beggar's Bazooka and I'm not kidding here. The Beggar's Bazooka is amazing because it has this burst fire ability and stocking up the rockets and it's, it's a little bit faster. I can't really explain why they put it that way but it is just like that. If you want consistency and more a de defensive aspect of this gameplay you should use the default rocket launcher or the original whatever but the most damage comes from the beggar's bazooka when you use the beggar's bazooka you basically go for the conqueror as your buff as your as your banner you have three banners you have the battalion's backup you have the buff banner and you have the conqueror and basically none of them are useless the battalion's backup is actually quite amazing but people underestimate it too much but you have to pop it in the right time to prevent the crits to happen the Buff banner is always a good thing because more damage is awesome, but if there's just one big uh, one big giant and uh, there's a scout, he basically marks him for death, so the buff banner is not that much of a big deal if you don't have it. And that's why I use the Conqueror, especially in combination, and like all, only in combination with the Beggar's Bazooka. The reason is quite simple, because of the upgrades. It is just like this. The Beggar's Bazooka has to be used up close. When you try to range fire, your damage drop off is insanely high first. Second, you don't hit anything because it like sprays around the rockets. And third, you don't upgrade rocket specialists in the beginning. And that's why you have to be up close to do the maximum damage on range, also hit everything, and then not die. And that is what the Conqueror does. It makes you being fast when you pop it, so you run faster. And when you hit someone, you gain health back. Which is amazing because you don't have to get the final blow on them, but you just hit anything and you spray around, you get the health back. Which is nice because that makes you being more offensive, more capable, more agile, basically more, more, I don't know, you know what I mean. Now we got that covered, and by the way, the melee doesn't really matter. I use the market gardener because why not? I mean... You, you don't use a melee. I just won't recommend using the equalizer or the escape plan and even then I would take the escape plan because you, can, because you can run fast if you are low on health. But it's... I mean if you can't get healed and the medic is there and you have the escape plan it, it's just stupid I think. So melee choice is up to you but I wouldn't recommend escape plan or, or the equalizer. Alright, to the upgrades. You upgrade your rocket launcher first and that is natural. You don't upgrade your buff banner or your conqueror for that matter until late game basically. And you don't upgrade your melee and resistances is not a big deal. You, you only go for the crit resistance and nothing else until you have enough money. So up for the Beggar's Bazooka. The Beggar's Bazooka is basically reload speed and then damage. In between, I would recommend to put at least one or two times, at least one time, that's fine actually, ammo capacity and one time health on kill. Health on kill stay, makes you able to stay alive a lot longer on front because you have to be on front. And the ammo capacity, seriously, you don't get any ammo from the dispenser and that's why you have to know exactly where the ammo kits are pl being placed. If you have that not in mind, you run out of ammo pretty fast as it is, and if you don't know where it is and time your ammo pickups, you are helpless because you don't have ammo and just run around like like a derp. You just derp around and can't do anything. You're like you're like magic carpet Pokemon, you just use splash and can't do anything because you just jump around and have no ammo left and can't get it back. That's why you it is essential to know where the ammo placements are to pick it up. So basically you go for one one time ammo capacity and then the rest on reload speed. It is up to you if you want one time health on kill in the beginning, but I would recommend it nonetheless in any case. So just get it as you can, but reload speed and ammo capacity is the first thing. The second thing is then you want to go for, and I use that rocket specialist. It is 
I, I hear more, more people or uh, some people say that the rock specialist is not needed at all but to be fair at the second or third wave at least I would get it once because there are many cases where you can in fact snipe sometimes or like get some some range attacks before you get there and then get the maximum damage um, getting the damage first is your priority basically but the rocket specialist just before the damage upgrade is actually quite useful because you always deal maximum damage it's better it's better to um it's better to deal maximum damage on ranges than deal maximum damage only when you're close enough plus 25% if you have to upgrade but the point is that maximum damage on consistent on a consistent basis is better than maximum damage overall a little bit more damage overall so if you have the reload speed, one time ammo, one time health, one time rocket specialist, a bit scattered, and then you go for the damage upgrade completely. You upgrade it completely. When you're done with that, you go for the crit resistance. Most of the time, um, sometimes you don't need it at that point, so you go for something different. But just generally speaking, you go for the crit resistance because being one shotted or being not one shotted sometimes makes the difference. And you, the normal the normal base resistances are great but only for later game when you have enough money so after you have your crit resistance you can go for your banner upgrade so you don't have to pop it that off so you can deal more damage or you go for clip size you can um, you can stack up more rockets and then release them but i would only use that only if the medic overcharges you or you spend money on crit canteens because if you don't have if you have the the clip size, you can deal more damage on one spot, but that only matters. Really, trust me, that only matters for giant bots. But then to counterweight it, I would actually then not then always go for a crit canteen as well because it just amplifies each other basically. If you have one and not the other, which is we have the clip size and not the canti crit canteens or not the crit overcharge then it's it's unbalanced and it's not good enough basically but if you have both both amplifies one another one another and the effect increases exponential basically at that point if the discussion is up if you go for the default the normal resistances or for the ammo capacity and firing speed it is really up to you the firing speed really does not make that much of a difference to be fair I actually go for the ammo capacity because the amount of times you have to go back and then refill your ammo instead of staying on front the whole time and if you have your more maximum ammo then you get more ammo back from a health or yeah, from a medium ammo kit so basically you can stay longer up front if you have more ammo I would I would use that it really depends on how you play just get the basic upgrades first get the reload speed get the ammo get the damage and one time rocket specialist after that you, it's up to you what you do and crit resistance all right basically your only task as soldier is to kill everything you're only dealing damage you pop your banner as soon as it is available and you deal damage what you try to do is maybe chase down giant scouts that push through because you can rocket jump and, uh, and you are quite fast and can catch up with them your task is also to spy check and to kill the engineer bots also you stay at the tank when the tank comes your your only task is to stay at the tank and kill it until it's done you don't shoot anything else basically you just kill the tank that's your focus the demo man and the soldier stay on the tank the rest stays up front and collects the money and holds the rest holds the rest of the bots off that is how it is going basically now i want to cover some other upgrades because as soldier there's nothing else really to um keep in mind all other than not taking too much maybe fall damage from rocket jumping around because rocket jumping doesn't really help you that much so just try to keep it low and to take self damage because you're staying at the tank too much and you are basically killing yourself and that's why i love the rocket specialist at least once because you can snipe the tank basically and then be safe at all times now i want to cover some other upgrades or some other weapons at least and i want to quickly go over them the default rocket launcher would be your second choice if you are not really familiar or don't like the Bagus bazooka 
The rocket launcher is basically in the upgrades list like this, the priorities. First of all, ro reload speed, second, firing speed, one time, rocket specialist, and the rest goes on damaged straight. In between, you may want to add one time health on kill or one time ammo to be sure, but you don't really need ammo because you're staying at the dispenser most of the time. But health on kill could be useful. At least one, or maximum one time, let's say one time, because you don't le really need more. When you're done with the damage, it is again up to you what you want to upgrade. I would go for, it depends on the wave of course, but I would go for the crit resistance and then on something else that sort of enables me to stay alive longer or deal more damage. For example, the banner duration, just to give a few examples. The other weapon I see often being, being used is the black box, and to be honest, I hate it. The black box gives you health on hit, but it doesn't deal as much damage. You have just three rockets and you have to spend money on clip size. Seriously, if you are good enough, you don't really need... If you are just a little bit defensive, you don't need that health on hit from a black box and deal more damage and don't waste your time or and money, basically, and the credits on the clip size. You don't need really clip size as soldier at all. It is just a gimmick. Gimmicks are, are things that can enhance your gameplay, but only if you first of all can make use of it. And second of all, if you have everything else that is more useful than this. So clip size has to be upgraded somehow as a black box using soldier, but it is really not a great thing to do because you deal less damage than a other soldier could, could do. And you don't stay alive a lot longer because if you're one hit, and that's most of the time the case, you are one hit and you don't basically wear down your health and then die, but you die most of the time instantly. That's why the black box doesn't make that much sense. It deals less damage and you die fast anyway sometimes. Now to the Liberty Launcher. Please do me a favor and do never take the Liberty Launcher because the Liberty Launcher just deals less damage. That's it. It does nothing else but fast projectile speed, but does, that doesn't change a thing because robots often walk in a straight line and aiming at them is very easy. Don't use it because you just you just waste 25% damage. If you upgrade your rocket launcher, you still you still waste 25% of the damage. It is just like that. If you upgrade the four times damage bonus, which is 100% more damage, you still waste 25% damage. That's that's all. To the direct hit, it is difficult. It is really difficult to use it. You have to be on the spot, of course, as always. But with that, it's even more dramatic. It can get great damage, but the splash damage is really what defines the soldier. It, the soldier has the greatest splash damage. Even the demo man can't really keep up with him. Only if the demo man is really good, actually. But if you are if you are equally good, basically, then the soldier with the biggest bazooka has the best splash damage capabilities, which means that you try to, to enhance your natural capabilities. You want to enhance your splash damage, which is the damage that radiates off the explosion damage, basically, and that's what you're going for. And the direct hit doesn't have that much, so you would have to naturally go for the rocket specialist, which increases the blast radius, but it is really just, it just, you try to counterweight something that is really not supposed to meant to be, and just try to amplify what is there, and not what is not there, and force it into it, basically. Try to not use the direct hit because it's not, it, there are other ways to deal more damage, and you have to deal damage at all. So that should cover the main, the primary weapons. So the secondary weapons, you always use banners. You don't use shotguns, you don't use the gun boots, you just use the banners, which is the Conqueror, the buff banner, or the battalion's backup. Now what your choice should be is always the bath banner. If you use the Bagus Bazooka, I would go for the Conqueror because of the given reasons. And if you have more than one soldier and you are like on last wave or something, I would actually go for the battalion's backup just for this extra support of less damage and crit immunity as it is active. Or you just use whatever you want because you can play with it and you are familiar with that. I, I would be fine with that to be honest, as long as you do your job as soldier correctly. Now I want to talk about something that you should never do, and that is the air striker and the base jumper. What it does, <laughs> and I can imagine it to work, but I've never seen anyone being capable of doing so. I had a discussion once in the MVP match, and really, I, I just leave it right now. I never discuss anything again in the Manvis machines. I, I think I do it again, just for the sake of recording and just analyzing how fucked up people are in their minds trying to argue or not argue, and being illogical as hell, and not even try to 
to consider thinking about their actions. Let me just tell you why I bring this up. It is because of the S striker and the base jumper. I have once had a soldier who preferred the base jumper and the air striker over whatever rocket launcher and a banner that benefits everyone and not only you. The banner has a radius. If you have the buff banner, for instance, you try to stay n near everyone to just make everyone crit, mini crit. It is not really essential, but it is cool if you can manage that, like staying at the engineer and the heavy at the same time and then both getting the mini crits and that is awesome. You don't really have to do it, but it is really what makes everything better. But the base jumper doesn't do anything but lets you float around and being an easy target for this for the robots and they will shoot you down, I guarantee it. So the air striker and the base jumper tactic is basically to jump up, then float down with the base jumper, which is a parachute, and then shoot everything from above because you stack up your kill streaks that which makes you have a higher clip size. You upgrade clip size, reload speed and damage and of course one time as always the rocket specialist for maximum damage on range and you will need that because you are on maximum r range basically you're sniping then but people never seem to deal damage that I out damaged every soldier and there's no exception who uses the base jumper and the air striker in combination don't ever use any of those two things because no one benefits of that and it's just selfish if you want to do that. If your team can carry that, I would still use it because you learn wrong things, you are not being professional. And I have seen people being like, being dumb and saying it's all about fun. Yes, it's all about fun, but other people are about playing this game. It's not about your fun, it's about other people. It is a team that has to play, even though it might work because the team can carry you, doesn't mean that you can do whatever the fuck you want. I'm sorry, I I'm doing a separate video about that, but it's really just me raging about. Um, never use that, please. So anyways, that should cover the soldier. I hope you guys enjoyed it, I hope you could learn something out of it. The next guide will be the sniper and that will conclude my series. I think about making a serious damage spy, but I have the money spy, which is... Um, actually the only real purpose is a spy because there are better ways of dealing damage to be fair. It is something that you could, can do for fun, but the money spy is, in my opinion, more useful than the damage spy. But I think maybe doing a video on that too, but I will conclude with the sniper next time. And until then, keep it up guys, as always.